This is the first video for solving quadratic equations. Now there are lots of things to know about solving quadratic equations. Let's first start with some things that you hopefully already know just about solving linear equations. Those would be, well here's an example, 3x plus 1 equals, let's not make it too crazy. Okay, what we want to notice about this equation is that we have the one variable x. True, it shows up in, in two places, but we only have just one type of variable, the x. And there are no exponents on the x. This is a linear equation, and our strategy for solving a linear equation would be to combine your terms with the variable on one side, work to get your x on one side, I usually go for the left side, and get the number to the right side. And that's how we'll solve the equation, end up with x equals, let's just go for it. Let's take away 2x on each side. So I'm getting my variable on the left, and I'll get the number on the right. So take away 1. 1x equals negative 5. And 1x is, of course, just x. So I've got the solution. And when we're dealing with equations and solving them, our solution is always the value that if we put it in place of the variable in this equation, it would make it true. So these are our steps for solving a linear equation. We do need to know these steps to solve quadratic equations also in, in some methods. And well, definitely it's something you should just definitely know. So here's the breakdown on linear, and now let's go for some quadratic equations. So we have to know the different ways for solving a quadratic equation because the steps for solving a linear equation they just do not work with the, the majority of the quadratic equations that you have to deal with. So some examples of quadratic equations would be x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. That's a common one. Or a different one could be 3x squared equals 48. Or you could have, hmm, 22x squared equals 9 minus 13x. Here are a few examples, and what we should observe is that, again, we have just one variable, x, but we have some terms where there is an x squared. We maybe see a term that has just a regular x, maybe we don't. The, the, the feature that's consistent with these three equations and what makes them quadratic is that there is a term with x squared. This is a standard form of a quadratic equation. And it's in the standard form because to solve quadratic equations, we're usually getting all of our terms collected on the left side and have it equal to zero. I shouldn't even say left side, just all the terms collected on one side, have it equal to zero, and also that we have the terms in descending order. That's the way we like them to be arranged for factoring and, and for working with quadratic equations. Maybe the equation starts out in that form, all the terms on, left, on the left side, descending order equals to zero, that's nice. Maybe not, definitely this one. But if we move some terms, I could add 13x to both sides and take away 9 and move these terms to the left side. And, and we'll have some examples of doing that. So we could, with each of these, turn them into this form. The a, b, c is where we usually would find numbers. So. Here, a is, is the coefficient of x squared. It's 22. Um, the b, it's possible that b equals 0. And that's what would cause this equation right here, the one that has no x term. According to our standard form, the x term is what has our coefficient b. So no x term, it just means b is 0. It's x squared is what really matters. So standard form, and we can even include this part, that a should not equal 0, because that wouldn't take it from really a quadratic to something more like a linear equation. So there's our standard form, and the characteristic that we're keeping an eye out for is x squared. And that term tells us that our moves for solving a linear equation will not work on this type of equation. Now let's go through the steps of solving a quadratic equation. We'll start with this example, x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. So I see that term, that's, it's caught my eye, the x squared. I know it's a quadratic because of that x squared. Now, the method that we're going to use for this example, we're going to solve by factoring. It's possible that you 
have done this previously back when you learned about factoring. Then it's often thrown in here, you can use factoring to solve equations. The problem is you might remember that there are some things that you cannot factor, and so solve by factoring wouldn't work, and that leads us to some different methods that we'll look at. But solve by factoring is our first try often because it's maybe the quickest path through these problems. You'll make that, you know, you'll decide that for yourself as you see all these different methods, but we're most often dealing with things that can be factored, so we might as well solve them by factoring. So x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. We need to think of some steps. Is it in standard form? Meaning, all of our terms are on one side, equal to 0, and probably you should even have them in descending order. I would recommend descending order. So we do have it in standard form. Next is factor. Okay. I'm not going to talk too much about the factoring part. The factoring should be... Oh, I have to talk a little bit. Okay. So it's three terms. We have a coefficient here, but it's just one. This is the easier sort of trinomial to factor, where we just look for what's that pair of numbers that multiply together equals our third term, and add it together equals the middle term, and we'll choose positive 3 and positive 4. Once it's factored, we are using this zero product rule, which is pretty neat, and it's very useful for solving quadratic equations and, and doing lots of other stuff. Let's just come off to the side. Here's an example, x times y equals 0. So x and y, there are some numbers, we just don't know what they are yet, but multiplying them together equals 0. That alone, the fact that multiply together equals 0, tells me something. The only way you can multiply numbers and have your product have it equal 0 is if one of these numbers has to be 0. It's possible even they both are 0. So this is an idea that we're going to use a lot when we solve by factoring, and you'll see it a lot in the future. If we have it factored, we're looking at two parts that are multiplied together. So like there's my first part, the x plus 3. There's the second part, second factor, x plus 4. I know that multiplied together it equals 0, so I have to say, so maybe that x plus 3 that equals 0, or x plus 4 equals 0. What we have now are two linear equations. So we changed it from a quadratic, which is a little bit trickier to solve, into two linear equations, which are a bit easier to solve. And we're back to get your variable on one side and number to the other side. So let's take away three both sides here. And just think of this two separate equations to solve now. And don't intermingle these guys. Just be cautious there. x equals negative 3, first one. On the right side, this is a little up high. Take away four both sides x equals negative 4. Okay, now what's happened, what's interesting here, this has led to two solutions. So what's the story with the two solutions? When you're solving linear equations, you end up with one solution. Once in a while you get a no solution or an all real number. All real numbers are the solution in the solution set. With quadratic equations, you will come up with two solutions. And you can check them, but they're both going to be good solutions. There's nothing about the arithmetic that we've done or this algebra so far that would make us have to check. And let's do a check just to see that these really are solutions. But it's not a type of equation where we can come up with extraneous answers. 